Hi, I'm Anna Perlin. I've been represented by Sacro Gallery for five years. This is my second solo exhibition with them called A Colourful Year. You were hanging at the Mal Galleries as part of yes. the exhibition which the Thackeray Gallery was judging um, yeah. called Artist, Artist of the Year, which was sponsored by Artists and Illustrators magazine. We were the judges and, and had to decide who was going to win this um, thing. And I remember absolutely walking around the Mal Galleries and um, I can't remember exactly how many pictures there were. Uh, oh, yeah. 80, 100, I mean, quite a lot, and of different sizes. And, and I have to be really honest, it wasn't difficult at all for us. It was like, it's this person here. Um, and that was you, um, Anna Perlin. And we hadn't met. And right. um, it was a real pleasure to come across your work on a personal basis, but also on a professional one for the gallery. You know, you're a really lovely addition to our stable of artists. You have your own voice, which is terrific. Yeah. Yet you sit with the same level of integrity and quality. You know, you're always wanting to push yourself to the next thing. And I think it's that sort of curiosity that will keep you growing. Um, and, you know, I've only had the privilege of working with you and your paintings for five or six years five years uh or four years what well, feels like long yeah it's been yeah yeah, um, yeah. we packed a lot in um yeah. <laughs> part of the second solo show and you know we've had wonderful work in between and we've had so many clients and collectors just love your work we've placed work all around the world for you um you know it, it feels like a very happy uh, relationship we've got with you um so i just wanted to say from our point of view we were thrilled to meet you at that point <laughs> What did it feel like for you to win that competition? It was an amazing feeling to win that competition. I didn't expect it at all. And I wanted to start putting myself forward for competitions because I'd got to a certain level that I, I felt that I was ready to feel confident to do that, no matter where it led. Um, being an amateur artist, you know, 15 years before, or 10, 15 years before, then it was something that I'd always aspired to but never thought that it could happen to me and that was the confidence element and you were a gallery who are completely respected and just entered the competition to think it was something i wanted to do um winning it on the actual day and i didn't know whether i was going to say this or not but um on the actual day i remember i was we weren't going to go to the exhibition because we had it was a bit of a difficult time actually my mother-in-law died five days before the competition uh, before the uh, prize giving rather yeah. and it we weren't going to go because obviously it was a very difficult time but it happened to be on my actual birthday so we had babysitters arranged decided to come in and never thought that actually i would have won it so so being told that i'd won it it made me the thing about joan early that you know she did die too young and that if she you know she would regret not doing something and and it made it it heightened even more what you guys had given me that you'd given me such an amazing opportunity and i was so lucky in the grand scheme of life to be given that and then when we did actually meet and i really liked you guys as well and actually wanted to work with you because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and that was such a big thing that you know you want to enjoy working with the people who you're going to you know have take advice from or or you know it's a two-way thing so that was such an amazing thing for me and i just yeah i love working with you one of the things i always think about with you um is that you work did have a career before you became an artist um which i think actually adds another dimension personally to your understanding of what it means to be an artist and what it also means to have a more conventional career um and what i wanted to know was what that moment felt like when you made that shift when you made that decision to chuck in security for <laughs> uncertainty yeah um i think that for me being an artist was all about confidence because I wasn't trained as an artist. So I did textile design and marketing at university and I actually really enjoyed the marketing side and I went into buying and working in a more commercial environment. And I loved that, but art had always been a passion for me. So I'd painted since I was tiny. So I've always been an artist, but the change in my thinking of it was in my confidence in putting myself forward to to do something that was a passion that I always wanted to do but to actually share it with other people so I'd always 
um, been painting, but and then slowly, whilst working um, in London in buying, I'd started doing some just local art courses. I joined an art society, and being in an environment where you're talking to other artists, where you're, you know, maybe getting out and exposing yourself a little bit more, made me realise that there was this other world, and that it wasn't something that was completely unattainable to me. Um, talking to established artists as well as you know just other amateur artists like myself so then I started looking a lot more into artists that I loved and there's an artist called Jean Erdley who is or was a rather a Scottish artist who unfortunately died far too young I think she was 42 which happens to be the age that I am now and when I was in my mid 20s when I didn't have the confidence to maybe even call myself an artist even though I was creating art then I was reading about her loved her work and because she had she was well known even as quite a quite a young age but she as I said she died from breast cancer very early and I remember thinking then that I didn't want to reach this ripe old age and to regret not having tried to do art which I loved so that was a moment when I realised that that if I didn't try now, I didn't know when I was going to feel confident or have the opportunity to do it. So now or never. And I, and whilst I loved my job and I really enjoyed actually what I was working with, and um, I realised that this was an opportunity I had to take. And I was very lucky to have a very supportive husband, very supportive family. So the security whilst it is a really nice thing to have it's also kind of like you know going out and, and you know taking the world you know as you can and and so that was something i never regretted actually and i'm just so glad i did it when i did now i'm at the age that where she actually didn't manage to go any further than that so whereas i feel like i've got an awful lot left i mean that's fantastic isn't it to have a sort of i mean if we can all identify certain damascus moments in our lives where there's usually one pivotal pivotal person yeah. um be it a teacher be it an inspiration, yes. a hero, whatever. And um, Joan Erdley, um, too, for me, completely different response in terms of I haven't become an artist, but um, I think is one of the greats, you know. But um, I can, I mean, I think that's really inspirational, that concept of actually, you've got to leap off. I think people only regret what they don't do. You're putting yourself forward all the time for judgment and none of us like doing that in any kind of way. But art's also something that's very personal. Each painting, each everything you create is very personal to you. When you're in that, you're you're doing it for a real reason because you want to, you love it. So then to put it forward to other people to look at, to judge. And because art is so subjectional, then everyone's got an opinion. So to do that takes a certain amount of confidence and support from people to allow you to do that. So and, and that was a big thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I was wondering about how did you, you know, I dread, I, I sort of the dreaded lockdown. I don't like to talk about it too much, but it's been such a fundamental part of all our lives and, you know, will be a bit of history, I'm sure, in the future. But um, how did you find juggling um, being a working, being a working mother at the best times is a challenge, but being a working mother who works at home, who suddenly had her children at home? How did you, how did you find space for yourself in that time? I think it's been a challenge, definitely, as I've got a 10 and an 11 year old. Um, uh, but to be honest, it's been a challenge for the last 11 years. So, so I, I obviously was an artist before I had children um, and carved out space for me. And I think as lots of people in lockdown have been finding, then finding a balance between being at home and, and as an artist, I have my studio in my house so that I can I can dip into it whenever I want to. Whilst I do spend a working day, I make sure I, when the kids are in school or whatever, I go in as, as anyone who would go into an office, I would go into my studio and no matter what, and do some work, whether it was just tidying up because I didn't quite feel like I was in the headspace to do a painting or whether it's doing painting. And, and we've all found that, I think with lockdown, that finding that balance when you're not commuting or you're, you know, you've had a busy morning and then you suddenly need to be this other person in an office, in an, an art environment, then I found I've been doing that for a long time now and there's certain things that switch my headspace into being in a in my art room um, and my husband and my kids have been very supportive for me whilst it's been in lockdown and there's certain music I put on which just mentally makes me think right I'm now in my painting space and I can block out the world behind me so what's the music I love musicals. <laughs> I love the theatre. I love musicals. I'll just put on musicals all day. So, so yeah, I've tried podcasts and things, but it distracts me too much. What I want is to zone out into the 
world that I want to be in at that moment, which tends to be, you know, I do do a lot of, you know, landscapes, um, flowers, that kind of thing. It's because it's my headspace where I'm happy, I'm calm. And the musicals also, they kind of get me into that headspace and then the work is also the same kind of feeling I like. Feeling of a joy and relaxation it must therefore be at the heart of every mark you make um, because that's what yeah. you're feeling as you're listening to music and and also I think some of your paintings feel like a sort of um, that they've got almost like layers of a, of a stage set you know there's a, I wanted to talk to you about how you decided to mix paint and materials within the canvas and how you balance that because i wasn't ever trained in professionally in art and didn't go to art college or anything then and the reason why i really am now thankful for that is that i never was taught the the right way to paint as such or that there was a right or a wrong way and so that's meant that i've been very happy experimenting making mistakes finding happy accidents um, in my kind of like journey to create different things and and because of that then I didn't ever feel anything was off limits or that I shouldn't do things a certain way so it was just kind of very much experimental and also um, I love very much very different types of art and actually the mixed media came about because I love some American graffiti artists and they use an awful lot of pattern with spray paints um, and all sorts of kind of mixed media as well. And it was seeing some of that with also, and then also I love very traditional art as well. So it was my experiment of bringing all those different things in together. Um, I was doing some printmaking as well, which was using um, machine coal, which is collage. And then from the printmaking, that collage came into my paintings. Uh, my mum does the most amazing quilt making so she had an awful lot of fabrics which had amazing patterns and textures and and golds and all sorts of things that I wasn't using as paint but I was using maybe with some of the papers and things that I was using collage and I just thought to experiment with that as well and it, it created some you know really happy things that I wasn't expecting and I just kept moving it forward to what I have now which is lots of layers of it all. Yeah exactly and it's surprising because sometimes if people haven't seen your work in the flesh when they yeah. come to see it, you see them go closer and closer and closer and they're like, oh, oh what's yeah. that? You know, yeah. if you put a piece on and you are 90% complete on your painting and you stand back and you come to it the next day and go, oh, oh, I don't like that. Or I don't, how easy is it to change? Um, every painting I do has bits that aren't right. So the next day I come to, so there's always mistakes in my work. And I think actually that's, part of the joy of it and because I do lots of layers then if I say put on a piece of collage that I don't want just like with a painting you paint over it I paint over an awful lot of the layers I put on whether it's fabric or other types of collage I will paint over it and change it it's a it's an ongoing process it's never a kind of you know fate complete it's always changing it's interesting this particular solo show you've um, created for us um, which will be hosted in the gallery throughout July um, it's covers understandably because you've worked for over a year on it all the yeah. seasons um and yes obviously we're, we're we're showcasing it in the summer but i noticed and we talked about this actually there seems to be a lot that occur in the autumn which must be one of the most beautiful seasons as a painter because the colors are stunning in the autumn um, yeah. would you say that's one of your favorite seasons to go and paint in yeah, I think every season I always think this is my favourite season because when you're out, there's something you see that you love because you're out looking around you. So whether it's the blossom in spring, whether it's, you know, the colourful flowers in summer um, and winter obviously also has, you know, the snow, there's different colours. But I think it probably if it had to be, if I had to choose one, then autumn definitely. It's just so rich and uh, the contrasts are just beautiful and the patterns of, of everything is, is stunning. So yes, it probably is. But I think that I think that if I had a favourite, I would always be wanting to paint that. And I paint with the seasons. I don't tend to paint out of season. I paint what I'm seeing because that's what I'm feeling and that's what I'm wanting to capture. So, uh, so which is why in a little way, then um, every season I'm in is my favourite season at that time. Yeah, because well, really I'm loving something. I think that's really nice because, you know, every season does have something different to offer, definitely. Do you do any of your painting in live in, in the landscape or is it all pretty much studio based? All done in my studio. So I do, because I work on paintings over qu quite a long period of time, actually, like, like maybe a, a couple of weeks, um, then I 
I do want to kind of like go away, then come and have a look at it again. So the only time I've painted outside was when I did Landscape Artist of the Year, um, which was about five, six years ago. Um, so for the TV programme and it was brilliant. I loved it. But I think for me, having a bit of reflection on my work to be able to consider it, think about it, move things around, gets the feeling that I want, um, as well as being out in the environment is when I'm walking around and just soaking it up. It's like looking at things through a, a phone camera. If I'm painting, I'm looking at it, the, everything through my painting, whereas what I want to do is soak it up, then go back to my studio and then express that. Uh, is that and, and paint what you feel. Yes, yes, very much so. Because if you're in it, sometimes you might paint what you see. Um, so yes, like yes, yeah, exactly. And I, and I want to paint what I feel. So everything's a real place. Everything's a real flower that I'm painting. It's just that it's my reaction and I guess the way I'm feeling towards it rather than the exactness about it. And you mentioned actually painting live for, um, was, um, for Sky Art. I filmed it in 2016, actually, and then it all was the same year as when I won with you. Was that an amazing experience, painting yes, live? It was, there it was amazing just because, well, firstly, being around a TV um, crew and stuff was something I've never done before. Yeah. And then also being around other artists, the buzz of it, people just coming up to you and talking to you about what you're doing when you're actually painting it. And having done the Landscape Artist of the Year on TV, lots of people also were seeing what I was doing and therefore talking to me about it and connecting with me, which was so actually filming it and doing it was amazing. And then also afterwards, people wanting to connect to me from all over the world, actually, when it was put out a couple of years later in Canada, America, that kind of place. And people were then suddenly getting in touch with me and saying, I've just seen you on TV and, you know, I love your work or whatever. And it was amazing to connect with that community. Definitely. I mean, I think art, being an artist, a lot of the time can feel like a very solitary profession. Um, and how do you get, <clears throat> you know, uh, response, feedback on an ongoing basis? Of course, during a solo show, there's a build up and you have a private view in normal times. And um, you get a, a moment where you get a, an ins a wonderful uh, buzz of, of, of people connecting. But I think since the rise of social media and the way that the world's got smaller in many ways, and it doesn't matter whether you're in Honolulu or Aberdeen yeah. or London or, you know, uh, Spain or wherever, we, we've all got access to the same things through social media, which brings us all, which is, there's many positives to that. Um, and as you say, people, people have been in touch with you who, who live from the other side of the world. Um, and I think that must be fantastically gratifying in a way. Um, but and opens up that sort of sol feeling of solitude into something much greater. Thinking about this particular show and the body of work and the different subjects covered, it's a, it's a great, there's a huge range. Um, and one of the new uh, elements that I can see, which may, may, may not be new to you, but are new from the show that we had before, which was incredibly successful, um, is the um, buildings. Yeah. And Venice and observing you know a more urban side of of life um you know it's not you know we, you've got your absolutely beautiful reflective lakes seas water flowers trees all those absolutely beautiful elements that i would call your signature pieces really um but there is in this show the introduction of venice now um how did that come to be obviously it, it was from a memory of a trip there i presume Yes, I was, my husband took me there for my 40th birthday, actually, which was amazing. Um, and I'd always wanted to go to Venice because so many artists paint Venice and I wanted to know why they wanted to paint Venice. And um, up until then, I very much wanted to paint the British countryside because that's what I want on my walls. I, the countryside is so important to me and I, and I wanted to surround myself with it. So therefore I painted what I want to surround myself with. And going to Venice and seeing it for the first time, I mean, I did realise how beautiful it was and I completely understood why, the art, why other artists wanted to paint it. And when I got back um, from there, I started experimenting with a bit and it was very different from what I've currently done. So it actually took me an awful long time to get any paintings that I was even a little bit happy with because I wanted to understand what I wanted to paint, why I wanted to put it on my walls, because 
any painting I do is one that I want to hang up in my house and that underlies everything. So to create something from a very different place was what, what was that reason? And, um, and it was starting to paint it and I realised that actually there's a lot of similarities with landscapes in a way. So the different the areas of contrast, the different areas of pattern and it was exploring that. Um, and I just actually found that I felt an affinity with it a lot more than I even realised and it's something I'm going to continue to do but because it's new to me and I'm still experimenting and that's what makes it exciting as well then Absolutely. it's going to be a long yeah. process. I mean with the, the there's Venice that appears in the show we've got sort of um, a really really lovely uh, select group of them but also there's a scene uh, a, a really lovely street scene of you know yeah. our local environment uh, which, did you did you paint it's a triptych and it's three well there were three individual panels weren't they actually but of a street and it's a sort of continuation of the street so i think we're going to display them as as, as one piece um did you do that after venice after the paintings of venice yeah, Venice introduced me to what I liked about buildings and some of the negative space as well in between the, the roof line of Venice, the windows. And when I realised what it was about Venice that I was starting to enjoy, then I started looking in my local environment. So the street scene, the triptych are actually just down the road from me. And it's um, a snow scene where I, where we go sledging actually with the kids. And when I was you know I keep myself open I don't ever want to say I'm just going to paint this or this because if otherwise when I'm out and about if I'm narrowing down what I'm thinking then I'm not going to see things or open myself up to other opportunities and so I was seeing the this street scene and thinking that's got some similarities with maybe some of the negative space I use in my landscapes and also what I've been enjoying about Venice and so I started experimenting with that as well and I'm and this is the very beginning of it for me so I'll always do landscapes and I'll always do flowers and things because it is a very much a happy place but I also want to do things that challenge me that are different that, that I get wrong as well so sure talking of challenge um one of the things I think you do immensely well is you scale up and you scale down so you can work in miniature you know 20 by 20s which you know um for people who want to sort of imagine what that that looks like you're not talking much bigger than a postcard um yeah. up to huge you know as you can see behind you in in yeah. your setting there I, I i imagine that painting something like four foot by six foot or something like yeah, that <laughs> yeah, it's you are able to do 20 by 20 postcard size pictures and scale right up to huge paintings that will fill an enormous wall do you have to be in a different frame of mind to if you're going to do small are you thinking i'm just in the you know how do you approach the two different ends of the spectrum i think for me it's like painting different subjects you see something different when you paint a small painting to a big painting if i try and do a small painting on a large scale or do a large painting on a small scale then they don't work because they have different things in them that you're looking for there's different contrasts in it there's different brush size strokes so it's very much having yeah, as you say a very different head space when you're thinking about it but in my house that's why as i said every painting i do is about i imagine it in my house and i've got different areas and some things i want as you say a big immersive painting and i kind of imagine myself when you're sat and it, it feels like you're in that landscape and other times it's just a, um the smaller paintings the reason is because i just some color combination you can really get through in small paintings because it's it's a much smaller area to focus on that specific thing so and then it means that I'm bringing out something different in each one and not trying to create the same painting on different scales. And that's very important to me that I don't try and create, I don't do sketches and then scale them up. Each painting's completely unique and kind of like goes where it wants to go rather than me trying to recreate a different painting, but in a different scale. And when you work on small paintings, are you, might you have a number of them on the go at the same time? Yes, I actually with big paintings as well, because sometimes what when you're doing a small painting and you realise and you're doing it for a certain reason, it will feed into a, something in the bigger painting, but in a different way. So I actually do work on maybe two or three paintings at the same time just to keep me fresh as well. Because if I'm I think, you know, the phrase that, you know, to, um, can't see the wood for the trees. And sometimes when you're working on something, then that's the same thing is that you get a bit too immersed in it and actually the feeling that you wanted you can get bogged down in the detail so being able to stand back focus on something else and then come back to it means that you can keep the bits that give you that feeling and remember to change the bits that don't do you ever have a favorite 
No, the current painting I'm doing and the one I'm about to do are always my favourite okay. because then it means that I'm always looking forwards and always interested in what I'm doing and the next one's going to be the best one. So. And are you, are you, yeah, well, that's really good. That's, that's, that's a lovely way to be, isn't it? I mean, uh, are, you, are you critical? I mean, do you look back at the work that you did the week before and go, oh, or do you try not to do that? I mean, how do you manage keeping yourself up? I try and make it so that every painting I do is a learning experience and I'm always learning from the one beforehand to be able to then inform the one in the future. So no painting that I've done is ever wrong. It's all a process to developing myself as an artist and to finding something interesting and new to, to look forward to. I think you had started to introduce us in the last solo show, Figures. Um, I think we have one or two, um, yeah. um, which were beautiful, slightly sort of uh, mysterious single figures. In this show, you've started to introduce more of a narrative with some figures on a beach. And um, yeah. it, what do you feel about painting people? I love painting people. And again, it's working out how I want to connect with people when they're up in my house, in my wall. And a lot of it, I'm still experimenting an awful lot. So I am still painting figures in landscapes, figures on their own, um, maybe slightly some abstract figures I'm looking at. And it's a lot more of a, a longer term journey for me because I don't know quite how I feel about uh, what I've done. Whereas with my landscapes, I have a much more emotional connection with the landscape and have done for decades and decades. Okay. This is a lot more newer and personal. And so I'm still experimenting an awful lot. With, in the landscape, it's about me and my experiences my family so some of the beach scenes are when we've been on when we're on holiday and it's about how you know my family are interacting with the landscape and and I have an emotional connection with the landscape and that can be just the trees or the plants or the the colors but also then us in the landscape is now starting to to be something I'm interested in but I'm I'm resolving it and keeping on going with that in in different ways I mean, it, it's wonderful because you seem to have so many different things that inspire you and make you want to paint. You know? <laughs> when you see it from your studio to the framer, then to the gallery and then on the walls, do you have any moment where you can just go, uh, wow, this is a great body of work? Or do you feel shy around it? Or, you know, have you got any window where you're able to be objective just for a, a, a minute? I think I, I still find it amazing that my work is in galleries and in your gallery. And so um, I, but as I said, I, because a long time ago when I went professional with it or when I went full time, when I decided that no matter what any, anyone else kind of like said, I would always do it for me. Um, and if I was happy with my work, like 100% happy and confident in it, then then yes, everyone's you know got their own personal opinion about about art, but it meant that if I was happy, then and I could pass that on to a few people, then that would happen. So I try not to judge myself and to enjoy it instead, and I think that's really important. So coming to the show, once I've done it, I've I've done it, and seeing it hanging up always makes it look amazing anyway. In you know in the gallery, so going from in the studio and it's all propped up on the side and it's still a bit messy with when I'm doing other paintings, then it looks like my work when it's then framed and put into the gallery. I kind of I feel really proud that I've done that and that it you know that other people can enjoy it in that way that's great I mean that's really great and uh do you have a feeling when it do you ever feel sad when things sell uh, in terms of like it's a little loss <laughs> it's gone or you just I, I think because it's only been recently that I've started to buy art myself I've maybe bought some small pieces which um it kind of didn't matter what my husband thought about them and I put them up in the house but we've started to buy some bigger pieces of artwork and I realised how much of an emotional investment it was, not just a financial investment, but an emotional one. And so going through that process myself and buying, and we've only got two pieces of, you know, big art. Um, I realised that for everyone who buys one of my paintings, they're going through that. And actually, so rather than feeling sad, I actually, it's an amazing feeling that someone's put that emotional investment into something that I've also put emotional investment into. Absolutely. Lots of the artists you have are real kind of like 
people that I've been looking up to and I know they've been with you for 20 plus years and so as a newer artist and one of the younger artists to come in it didn't make me feel apprehensive it made me feel included and that yeah. that was something I could also be is like work with you long term and be one of those artists in the future as well so exactly well here's to here's to a really exciting future and uh, more and as, as we focus just now here's to uh, your solo show that's about to yes. so thank you um it's been really good to chat